you know, I think that would touch that at the yeah. top level. Without, I don't want to be too harsh on Tommy, but no. <laughs> um, Trev, how did Mick get that grumpy reputation? I can't quite put my finger on it. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I, I really enjoy watching things like that. Uh, he's a real character. <laughs> We're going to take a break here. We're going to take a break here on before we go. Travis Close going to stick around. Plenty more to talk to him about. On the other side of the break, going to cross to Eddie Head Stadium, catch up with Robbie Walls and, of course, Brian Spore. Before the game from Collingwood, Travis Cloak, our very special guest. Now, Trev, you guys went to the movies during the week, yeah? Yeah, it was a nice day out. Grand Casino. Uh, you booked out the entire cinema, went to see Horrible Bosses. Here you are. How's the food? You're right there, mate. You got the <laughs> yeah, I got ice cream, stuck. popcorn. I got stuck carrying it all in for Woody. Oh, all, the, all the top tops oh, were here. No, no, of course you yeah. wasn't my man. No, now, I tell you, massive coincidence. You guys booked out an entire cinema at Crown to watch Horrible Bosses. Port Adelaide watched Horrible Bosses this week as well oh, cool. as a bonding experience for them. Of course, not quite the same budget at Port Adelaide. <laughs> they had to uh, get the rip-off DVD from Thailand. <laughs> Sit around at someone's house and watch that. They do have to return it on Monday, though. So. <laughs> do, do you feel do you, do you feel blessed at Collingwood to have you know, facilities you've got, the money you've got, the wealth behind the footy club? Do you, is that something that's easy not to take for granted when you're in the middle of it all? It's pretty special. Everything's put probably given to us. It's all there for us, but I guess it's up to us to actually go out and utilise those facilities, the connection the club's got with different things. So, um, yeah, it's very special and uh, we're actually about to do a nice revamp of the place and uh, get our facilities a little bit better than everyone else a little bit. God, that's going to make the rest of the competition pretty happy, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> at this particular point of the show, we say goodbye to our Adelaide viewers. Ooh, yeah, they're gone. <laughs> Can we get back to Always get back to moments. get back to the movies? Get back to acting. You fancy yourself as an actor, I know. I've got some evidence here. You think you're a pretty good answer. There's a, an actor. There's an episode of Neighbours coming up, which the Collingwood players feature, and this gold sack wood. Have a look at you stretching here. Right? Have a look at how many weights you've got on that bar there. All right, you are really just going big time. Right? Have a look here. I am. Oh yeah. Check me. Check me out, ladies. <laughs> That actually, see, that scene went for about two minutes. I mean, how did that feel? The next day, I felt really good through my shoulders and chest, but um, at the time, I was just thinking to myself, like, what else can I stretch? I'm obviously, uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, a little bit of this. <laughs> now back to this one again. So, um, yeah, there wasn't much I could do, but it was actually really good fun today. If you want to watch that episode, by the way, it goes to air on September 5 uh, on Channel 11. Tim, that may be the highest rating neighbours uh, of all time with you three boys doing something. And they tell me Cameron Wood's a massive neighbours fan. Is that how it all came about? Yeah, Woody actually went to our media guys and said, oh, I want to be an extra in some type of show and do something. And they said, well, what do you want to do? And he said, well, I like neighbours. So they made a few phone calls. And Seriously, at Collingwood, all your dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you about one of your teammates, Heath Shaw, who made some, I thought, pretty interesting comments this week about the fact that he would have no compassion for any teammate that he pushed out of the team, having served some penance on the sidelines. Did that come out wrong? Um, I actually haven't seen the interview or heard too much about it, but I guess we know Heath's a very important player to our team, and obviously someone's playing his position at the moment, and we want Heath back, but at the same thing, it's, someone's going to be pretty disappointed to miss out, knowing that he's coming straight back in. But for him to say that he would have, just he wouldn't care about our teammates' feelings, is that just... Uh, I, I think it might have come across a little bit wrong. He's probably a very caring person, and um, but... At the same time that you want to be playing senior football, you want to be out there every week. So um, I guess that's just what he wants He's to do. He's just another comedian at your club, though. Isn't he? You're all just you're all just in the media to say whatever you like. Just to <laughs> <laughs> no, he's very good. He did that way, and obviously, Swanee loves the yeah. uh, the media side of things. And what about Leon Davis? Because he flagged um, an openness to going home and leaving Collingwood and playing for West Coast or Frio. Yeah, he's obviously um, pretty open about it. He talks to the boys and yeah, he had probably the roughest time of his life last year when he missed out on playing the grand final. So he went home for a few weeks, analysed where he's at and what he wanted to do. And he actually took a, a longer leave just to, to realise actually where his head's at. And yeah, we're very thankful he actually came back. He's playing fantastic football and I guess at the end of the year, he'll reassess what he would like to do and if it's to play on at Collingwood or move elsewhere or uh, finish up, I guess that's his uh, opinion. On to more important matters. Uh, Trav, you strike me as a guy I'd like to get onto the end of a torp. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. You got a few off in your time, have you? Just a couple. Yeah, well, uh, that's a perfect cue for my new segment, Talk of the Week. <laughs> And 
And, and Colin would have been featuring very heavily in Torp of the Week so mm. far. He seems to have a culture down there that encourages the Torp. And we saw a beauty by Anthony Rocky. He would have trained with him. Does he get a few off during the during the training sessions too? Yeah, every chance he gets, he gets it and just lines up, swings those big legs through and gets a hold of them. <laughs> Does he? Well, uh, Cracker got a, a ripper off on, uh, on last weekend. He did it. It was an absolute ripper. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the way you say it. From outside 55, there's only one option from outside 55. Bang! Michael Hammer. One bounce. Bingo, bango. Way to check, please. That's a talk. Bag it up. Do, 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 do you see that? Do you, do you go up and go, good talk? I was very impressed with that. I was more impressed with his celebration. He's, where's yeah. my tea towel? Just wanted a bit of a face. Wash <laughs> I like that. He did it, he did it a few times, didn't he? He likes that one. Well, the talk is taking off. And, uh, You're to blame for this. Not to blame. You, we should be thanking yeah. you for we this. Are. We do every oh, week. Go on. Yeah, well, people try to horn in on it now. How many, this is, how this how is many going, more tops have you got? Go I've on. got a few. This is going right to the top. Even Demetriou what? is trying the to get boss. involved. Even he's acknowledged the, the top. Have a look. Well, look, the, there, there's no doubt that the torpedo is a wonderful feature of the game. And I, I heard Mick Malthouse the other day say that he encourages some of his players to do big barrels. And well done, Mick. That's nice to know. In fact, Mick himself does a barrel, and that's why he gets Torp of the Week. Have a look at this one. This is before the game. Oh, oh bang! bang! That is there sweet it is. Ooh, That is nice. Ladies and gentlemen, the Torp train is leaving the station. It is. Get on it, get on it now. Get on it now. Don't be late to jump on this particular bandwagon. This big game of footy. Now, Travis, back to you. Is it true that you had a bid on one of the block houses during the week? Is that a true story? It is true. Wow. I bet you missed out. Yeah, missed out by a couple of thousand. It was more of an investment and... It pushed past my budget. So yeah, so but I heard uh, I heard you didn't bid. You actually got someone to bid on your behalf. I got some footage of the guy who actually bid on your behalf. He was incognito, but this is who it was. <laughs> <laughs> Was he there with you? Was he also there bidding or nah, Mick Malthouse? Yeah, or? Mick was just hiding behind, just keeping an eye on everything. But uh, yeah, Dad did the uh, bidding for me, actually, so yeah, well. it was nice. Trav, you've got a huge couple of weeks to go. You're a super team and you deserve what looks likely to come your way. Thanks for coming on the show and all the very best. Travis Clark, one of the giants of the game, a break here on Before the Game. Robin Murphy from